we continued to be dragged from one place to another by Itsuki for a while. I also looked around to see if I could find any clues as to the truth of the situation, but I couldn't find anything. In the end, we all learned during our mystery tour was that it really seemed like the time wasn't moving forward, and that there were a lot of rumors about weird deaths right before, during, or after the miniature festival. Eventually, we found ourselves on the roof. So... What are we gonna do now? What if time, like, time doesn't seem to be moving, right? Cause it's dusk for way too fucking long, okay? Dusk, it, it, it's, it's like a be you know that, that beautiful timing when it's just like starting to go from day to night and you have the reddish sky? It's been that time, that, that, that lasts for like five minutes or something usually. It's been like that the entire freaking time right now. So I feel like time, in the actual world has stopped somehow but for us here in this weird separate place it hasn't and it probably won't until a death actually occurs here until someone dies or gets killed murdered whatever then time will start to continue again and we all get teleported back or transferred back to the other place or somehow i don't know <laughs> Well, why don't you try it out, Itsuki? In other words, we're at our wits' end, huh? I was too tired to react seriously anymore. I gave a small sigh and looked up at the sky. It didn't change at all, as though time had stopped. I wonder what the deal was with that. So Meanwhile, Itsuki let out a tentative voice still having an idea. What? Yeah? What? A non-existent mystery? How? It, it, it doesn't exist. What? I don't understand. Sorry. Komiya interrupted me before I could ha him. Hmm? You know something about that, Komiya? I turned to see her rummaging through the insides of her plush toy. Yeah. What? She pulled out a piece of paper from her bag. What Sumika came closer to peer at it. Hmm. We all came closer and looked at the piece of paper in her hands. The mystery takes the dead violated by the narcotic in uh yeah, narcotic into its prison. Such is the root of the horror. What? The mystery takes the dead violated by the narcotic into its prison. Such is the root of the horror. What do you mean by narcotic? Were we drugged? Are we all drugged? What the hell is this supposed to mean? That room? The one where Itsuki found her? What are you two talking about? I mean, it's very clear that whatever the fuck is happening here, and this whole mystery, and everything with the school, the whole fucked up parts, it's somehow related to the to the death of the very first principal, right? I feel like that's when everything started. Huh? You found her in a locked room? You just happened to have a key, what? How the fuck does a new fucking student manage to get the key to the old principal's room? Komiya pulled out one mystery after another. Ayana turned to Itsuki. The mystery takes the dead violated by the narcotic into its prison. Such is the root of the horror. That did sound meaningful. Almost forcefully so. Leo-senpai, 
二枚目には何が書いてあるんですか<笑> Komiya seemed as though she had forgotten about it until Sumika pointed it out. She hastily pulled it out of her bag again. The girl exists? That was all that was written on the second piece of paper. The girl exists? Sumika said it before I could. It was so random, I couldn't even begin to guess what it was about. Huh? Faint ink? I blinked my eyes and considered the piece of paper again. Oh, I see it now! There was another faint line bef below the more obvious one. But it seemed like the paper was ripped right in the middle of it. Oh no, don't tell me we gotta go underground. Sumika let out a mystified voice as she finished reading. We have an underground storage? Oh, that one. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Ayana reacted to Itsuki's words. At the end of the corridor. Oh, that's right. There was a room that we couldn't enter there. So yeah, a little bit, but I don't think I'm gonna like the answer of whatever we're getting closer to. For some reason, Itsuki suddenly addressed Komiya, his attitude as cheerful and laid back as always. Yeah, I'm kinda interested too. Oh. Ayana's like, nope, nope, please no. Sumika took Ayana's hand and proceeded onwards. Ayana seemed to be feeling better too. As she smiled while squeezing Sumika's hand back and followed after her. I really wonder what that fit on the stairs back then was all about. Yes, Nari. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Komiya's voice brought me back to reality, and I started walking too. Hmm. I'm curious about what Itsuki and Komiya were talking about, definitely. Sumika and Ayami seem to have made up. Oh, shit. It seems like a choice where paths sort of start to divide. Because you're kind of choosing between the mystery of Itsuki and Komiya, or sort of the strangeness that's going on between Sumika and Ayana. Hmm. I mean, I feel like this choice is about the bigger mystery in general, the first one, about the mystery of the school, the seven mysteries, whereas Sumika and Ayana, that seems more like a personal thing about Ayana herself and her past and all that. So which one would I... I mean, I don't even know if there are multiple uh, endings or multiple routes or something like that. Maybe the choice is just like if you make a bad choice, you end up in a bad ending. And there are so many bad endings until you finally reach the good true ending. I'm not quite sure about that. So... Which one should we choose? Like, I feel like Ayane's... Somehow Ayane, right? Her past... Does it have something to do with, with what's happening here right now as well? I don't think it's entirely directly connected with what's happening and everything with the school here. But I think that her past is part of the reason why she was brought here though. I think that's it. Because let's say if you from a, as a person from the outside, right? And you're setting all of this up. So for, for example, this would sort of support a theory where... You think there's a mastermind behind all of this that, that's that's putting everything, all the puzzle pieces into place and and they only just have to play out until someone murders someone, you know? Like, Ayane could be a possible reason why she's brought here because the quote-unquote mastermind behind this 
knows about her past, meaning he knows, or that person knows, that Ayane is capable of killing someone. Therefore, you do have uh, a person here that's capable of killing and therefore it's more likely for a murder or someone, you know, to end up dying solely because you already have someone here that's done it in the past. So I, I think that's that's part of the reason, like Ayane is here because of her past. That's why she's sort of been selected to come here. But I don't think that's anything with the bigger mystery though. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm just gonna go with Ayana. Even though I'm very curious about uh, Itsuki and Komiya too, I'm gonna have to choose the two waifus here and especially Ayana. It seems like Sumika and Ayana made up alright. Ayana was the type to wear her heart on her sleeve. I don't think she would have been capable of putting on a friendly act in front of Sumika just because she felt bad. At one point, I was starting to get seriously worried. But it seemed like everything would be okay, at least as far as those two were concerned. It's actually open. Itsuki was looking at the door at the end of our destination. The door that was always locked with a do not enter sign on it. I gave Kumia a glance. <laughs> you never know, I don't know. You happen to have a random key to the principal's office too. Maybe she has the fucking master key for every door. She returned me an indignant look. I'm not so sure about that. Still, the doors most certainly didn't unlock on their own. Did they open before we found ourselves here? Or was someone in our group lying? After all, each of us had a period we acted on our own. I mean, even Ayana might have woken up before me, and... Gah, what was I even thinking? And I think that's the, that's the main reason why we're doubting each other, right? Because we all sort of had this period where we were knocked out or separated or whatever. So it, that creates doubt in our mind of like, huh? If something did happen, it possibly could have been them because we don't know where they were during that period of time or whatever. Even if that was the case, what was the point of opening random doors? This weird situation was getting to my head. Itsuki opened the door with no hesitation at all. Sumika suddenly let out a small whimper-like sound. I looked at her to see her usual chipper mood gone, almost as though it was an illusion. Her face was contorted in palpable anxiety. Are you okay? Are you okay? Is it her time to freak out now? Ayane addressed her in a worried voice. Like, you're... You don't want to come in? Is something wrong? Hmm. I gave the space beyond the door a peek. Yeah, it opened right to stairs leading down, so it was pretty dark and dusty. And for some reason, there was a big mirror on the wall, uh oh. It wasn't the most pleasant place I'd ever seen, that's for sure. Yeah, but they shouldn't be alone though. Yeah. Okay, I, I agree with that. Sumika shouldn't be alone, or any, I don't think people should be alone in general. Because it even okay if if there is sort of a random killer running around here that we just haven't found yet, if one person is alone, they're you know very susceptible to just being picked off and killed. I'll stay behind with them. It doesn't feel right leaving two girls behind. So I guess that choice from earlier 
decides whether we stay with uh, Ayana and Ko uh, Komiko right now. Or what the hell? Komiya? No, Komiya is the other one. Fuck. <laughs> with Ayana or Sumika. Or if we go downstairs with Itsuki and, and Komiya. In which case, I actually would have preferred to go downstairs. Whatever. Maybe we'll do, if there are multiple endings, multiple routes, we'll, we'll do that one later. Yeah. Be careful down there. Since the lock was open and all. Itsuki and Komiya disappeared beyond the doors. The three of us remained in a dead silent corridor. Ayana came closer to Sumika, who in the meantime seemed to have sat down with her back against the wall. I mean, I get it. It's sort of a strange, weird vibe. She seemed to have suddenly gotten pretty pale, yeah. It was as though her and Ayana's position were suddenly reversed. The two will probably take some time to come back. Do you want to go to some classroom and find a more comfortable chair? Sumika? Hello? She lowered her head without an answer. Ayane too looked at her with worried eyes. Huh? Oh no, girl, she's gonna freak out. The scene of Ayane's fit surfaced in my mind. What? Look at her eyes, what the fuck? As Ayane or as Sumika raised her face, her eyes seemed kind of vacant. Trader, what? Ugh. Sumika suddenly let out a cry and pushed Ayana away from her. Ay Ayana! Wh what the hell was that supposed to be? But it's like she actually is possessed. What if that's it's the ghost? The ghost of the piano person? Like, that's the thing from the story, right? From the rumor that the dude told us, Itsuki. The piano player who just jumped out of the window, his eyes seemed vacant as well, like empty. That's kind of what she is having, and it's kind of what Ayane had before as well when she was freaking out. That's one thing they all have in common. <sighs> Sumika started mumbling to herself. Ayana and I, both confused, could do nothing but stare at her. <laughs> what? And just like that... She seemed to return to normal. Are you sure you're feeling okay? Um... Yeah, no shit. And her eyes are back to normal now. What the fuck? Is this the revenge, huh? The revenge for her slapping away your hand earlier? She got my revenge. Sumika gave Ayana her hand with a smile. Mm. Ah. Ayana, still seemingly a bit out of it, took Sumika's hand and stood up. Both of them were smiling right now, but no no no, this is not real smiles. I couldn't help but feeling that something was off. And in that moment, the door suddenly opened again. You were pretty quick. That's the only thing? Storage? Is that so? What about the stairs? Okay. I see. From what I caught in my glimpse, there didn't seem to be anything particularly special with those stairs. If there was a clue, I guess it would be that mirror. Hmm. Hmm. 
この七不思議って公主台に続く階段の段数と同じだからって説が有力なんですよねそれを言ったら鏡もよく魔よけって言われてるよな、really? Demonic spirits? Hmm, is that so? Like, there's just so many fucking weird theories that it could possibly be. Because we haven't actually found any concrete proof of basically anything. Which is why we're sort of like, okay, it could be demons, it could be ghosts, it could be, I don't fucking know, it could be a killer running around, it could be all just fucking set up, it could be Danganronpa version 4.0, I don't fucking know. Yes, Nari. Kagami ni nani ka aru no? Uh, not necessarily. I just thought it was a weird place for one. That's all. Tascani. Tachiri kinshi no basho ni aru te yu no wa fushigi da yo ne. True. I mean, a mirror is in a place. Or the function of a mirror is to look at yourself in it, right? For a person to look in it and see their reflection. So why would it be in a place that no people normally wouldn't go? Huh. Ayana agreed with me. Maybe, I mean it was kind of used for storage, it could also be, but but why is there like a mirror like that in the school in the first place? And why wouldn't it be used for anything? I'm pretty sure there are plenty of girls that would just love to fucking look at themselves in the mirror to reapply their makeup or something, you know? Well, that's possible, I guess. Komiya went back to the doors again. Hmm? Something wrong? She, she feels weird whenever someone enters that room. She fixed her eyes on the ground again. Are we gonna start this shit again? Are you gonna freak out again? Yeah, I, I, think, the, I think you're actually getting in the right direction, Itsuki. Like, again, the moment someone enters in that room, she starts to sort of panic a bit. And with that, Komiya disappeared beyond the doors. Itsuki followed her. The three of us were left behind. Looking down on them from the top of the stairs. Itsuki began inspecting the thing. I heard Ayana inhale a tense breath. Itsuki tried to slowly push the mirror to his side. <gasps> For a moment, it felt as though time had stopped. Behind the mirror, there was an extremely conspicuous human-sized hole. What the hell is that? I couldn't imagine how one could accidentally open a hole like that. No matter how I looked at it, it looked like it was artificially made, and then hidden with a mirror. So it's a tunnel? By, from someone? Made by someone? Komiya said so, after taking a short peek inside. Uh, and with that laid back remark, he went right into the hole. Alright, if you wanna crawl into the hole, be my guest, Itsuki. It seemed like it went on a downward angle, as Itsuki slowly sank down outside of our sight. He sure had nerves of steel. I guess he really just is that curious? He's just like, yeah, you know what, whatever. He just cares about finding out the truth. Doesn't He doesn't get scared or whatever. We all fell silent and waited. And then, after five or so minutes, Itsuki suddenly reappeared. He didn't answer, dude. He actually seemed kind of out of it. What? Itsuki. Dude, are you okay? Lopto. What? A skeleton and a robe? Like someone hung themselves? 
Itsuki pulled out his mobile phone. Komiya looked at its LCD screen. He took a picture? Oh no. What's the picture date? What does it say? Are we in the past? I heard Sumika, who seemed to have moved further away from us before I knew it, let out a deep breath. Oh shit. She was staring at the ground with confused eyes. Hey, Sumika! Oh no, here we go again. What the fuck? Huh? Oh god, come on girl! Why are you that freaky? Uh, as I tried addressing her, she suddenly burst into laughter and ran away further down into the corridor. Don't run away! Ayana was about to go after her, but... Wait, Ayana! I caught her by the arm. Don't go after her. Look, did you see that freaky look in her eyes? We confirm what we already know. Go after her. What do you mean what we already know? Fuck it. Let's reassess the situation first. Hey, but she is not acting by herself. Somebody else is doing that for her somehow. Itsuki addressed the panicking Ayana in a calm tone. She turned to him. I did so too. What? Her name was missing from this year's registry? Are you kidding me? Komiya made a small nod. What does that mean? That she's already dead? That she is the ghost, basically? Itsuki ascended the stairs, phone still in his hands. He showed us what was displayed on it. What if it's her skeleton? Huh? He said something about a skeleton, and all I could see in that picture was the rope he mentioned. What? Itsuki went to his email folder. All that was written there was play along. It was probably what he'd shown her instead of the picture, and then switched it to the actual picture when he talked about the date. Itsuki showed us the date of the picture just in case too. It was today, okay, thank god. So it's not like we we trans you know, teleported into the past or something. But, but what the fuck? So he made that up to try to, try to, uh, try to see if, if Sumika would sort of mess up. You know? Because clearly, clearly, something is off with her. Damn it, and I thought Itsuki was the weird one. Itsuki seemed as though he was enjoying a mystery show. Uh, show. That's the part that irks me so much, that he just seems to be fucking enjoying this, you know? Ayana just answered with a vacant, confused look. But then she seemed to get a hold of herself. Yeah, she regarded the two. I would like to confirm it too. Yeah. I'd like to confirm it too. Well, you know, seeing is believing. I sure am. I answered his sarcasm with a smile. What? What do you mean by that? The fuck do you mean by that? I mean, we did see very, very early on Ayane lying dead in the fountain, right? That wasn't was sort of an illusion, so our eyes could not be trusted in that situation. Well, 
I guess there are cases like that. But that isn't now, is it? Mahane. But I guess what I I'm I guess Itsuki just means more in general. Yes, sometimes seeing is believing, but in some cases your eyes actually can deceive you. And with that, all four of us descended the stairs to the storage room. I admit that there are cases when you can't trust your own eyes. But wouldn't that be exclusive to cases when you are on your own? Or was he trying to say that all of what I was seeing right now, them included, was just a delusion? Oh my fucking god, don't start... Don't start throwing a theory like that into the mix, that I'm actually all here alone. I'm all on my own inside of here and I've just imagined all these people in here so I'm not... So I don't feel fucking lonely. 